Today I shall be discussing about uh, realization of logic gates. So that means how the logic gates are realized in circuit form. Uh, many uh, of the logic gates are available in integrated circuit form and there are different logic families. That means different kinds of circuits can be used and thereby the transistor circuits can be used, diode circuits can be used and mass circuits can be used to realize these gates and uh, therefore there are different families of logic gates available like uh, diode logic, diode transistor logic DTL, transistor transistor logic TTL, mass logic and complementary mass logic, CMOS logic, emitter coupled logic and so on based on the kind of circuits that are used and the kind of devices that are used to realize these circuits. Now let us discuss about some of these realizations. The simplest of them is the diode logic and let me discuss about uh, the diode logic circuits here. Uh, please look at this diagram. This is an AND gate realized using diodes for positive logic. So it's a three input AND gate and uh, you make it if the inputs are A, B, etc. and there are some other such stages and this is the last one, it is an end stage. So therefore it is an, say an N input AND gate. It uses the N number of diodes at the front and these are connected together to a supply V which has to be chosen as the voltage equivalent for level 1, logic level 1 and you connect it through a large resistance R and this is the output Y. Now here RS is much smaller than R and it is negligibly small and RS is introduced here as a model because on this side you have the input logic, logic levels connected from some sources. The resistance of these sources are included here as RS, okay. So but this RS is very small and uh, for all practical purposes this is like a short circuit. Now if any one of these inputs happen to be at 0, that means the voltage is, is very small of the order of 0.2 volts then what happens is this particular diode which is connected to V on this side and almost ground potential on this side is forward biased. So the situation is like this. So this side is connected to V which is equal to V1 and this side is connected to V low that means uh, it is almost a ground potential. Therefore this diode is forward biased. If you look at the rest of the diodes, you will find that these diodes are just forward biased and this side is when you connect V1 on this side and you connect V1 on this side and you have resistance, these two resistances and the diode in between. Therefore these are not forward biased or there is no bias across these diodes. Hence these diodes won't be conducting. Then if you introduce uh, a logic level 0 here, 
So you will find that this diode forward is forward biased. Therefore, there will be current flowing in this direction. And if it is a silicon diode, about 0.6 volts or 0.7 volts drops across this diode, and the voltage drop across this RS is negligibly small. Therefore, rest of the voltage drops across this resistance R. If this is 5 volts and this is 0 0.6 and uh, the, the 4 point remaining 4.4 volts drops across this resistance R and the output voltage therefore is, so Y is equal to the diode potential itself. Diode potential plus this resistance drop which is negligibly small. Hence Y is of the order of about 0 0.6 volts. Hence the, this is at 0 0.6 volts and this side is actually V1, V1, V1 for rest of the inputs. Hence, rest of the diodes are reverse biased actually when one of the diodes is uh, forward biased by applying a logic level 0 at its input. Now, if another input is also logic level 0, then both these diodes are forward biased and both of them conduct and the current which flows through R gets divided through both these diodes and the same situation of uh, 0 0.6 volts here, 0 0.6 volts here and the output is equal to 0 0.6 volts. So if any one of the inputs, any one or more of the inputs are at logic level 0, output is at logic level 0. So, uh, Given all these inputs, if any one of them happens to be at 0, output is a 0, any one or more of them. And when all the inputs are 1s, the applied voltage is V1, V1, V1 everywhere and this is V1, therefore there is no bias across the diodes, hence no current flow takes place. Hence, if there is a load resistance connected here, the current can flow through this. And if the load is very, lo load resistance is very high, then some small amount of current flows through this and the voltage drop across this resistance is negligibly small and the output voltage is almost equal to V1. Therefore, when all are one, one, ones, all inputs are ones, output voltage is a 1. Hence, this circuit acts like a, an AND gate for positive logic. Now, the same circuit can be used as an R gate for negative logic. So, let us examine that. R gate with negative logic. The circuit is as I mentioned the circuit is uh, the same. Now you connect it to a high voltage, that means the voltage is equivalent to that of logic level 0. Please note, note that in, negative in a negative logic, the high voltage is say as an example 5 volts is used for representing logic level 0 and 0 volts is used to represent logic level 1. Now we apply 5 volts here, that means the voltage corresponding to logic level 0. In this example, of course, it is 5 volts. Now, if you apply uh, the logic level voltage of voltage corresponding to logic level 0 here, none of these diodes are, are, are biased, therefore they do not conduct. So current does not flow through these. And if there is an external load current can flow through this 
and with negligible drop across R the output voltage is equal to so logic level 0 itself. Hence for all inputs when all inputs are 0, 0, 0, all inputs are zeros, output is a 0. Now you make one of the inputs a logic level 1. That means you connect it to almost ground potential. Then so this particular diode becomes forward biased, it conducts and a large amount of current uh, flows through this because of which 